All right, y'all. It's, it's about 11.30. And I really need to uh, crank these embroidery machines. Up. I got to... Got some patches I got to do. But, um... I had just watched Stan the Man. I watched Stan the Man's video earlier today. And, man, he said that he lost $250,000 a year job. He said I wasn't printing because I lost because, I, you know, you had a job that was making you $250,000, a quarter million dollars a year. For you to open up heat presses and tell us how great those heat presses were. That's a wonderful job, man. You know, that's a wonderful job. And a lot of people who make content, you know, uh, would love to do that. Would love to do that. Would love to be in that position. And that's why if you're in that position, you got to thread carefully. You got to tread carefully. Um... And so he's saying he wasn't printing because of that. And, of course, I wouldn't be printing either. I would close my shop down, too. I wouldn't be making those shirts if I'm a con. It's hard to do both. And this is why I appreciate y'all, too, because we had a 1,000 subscribers and I can just do something quick like this. You see, a lot of times I don't even be editing my videos, man. You just don't, you just don't have the energy for creating this stuff when you're doing it in real time. And it's hard. A lot of the people who really making money doing this, and I'm not really making money. Like, I ain't no big, you know, I'm not making a whole bunch of money. We're no life-changing money, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm job to job, man. You know, I'm waiting on the phone to ring like every, everybody else. Um... But, you know, when you do it and you're doing it full time, let's just say you're doing it full time, it's enough to pay your bills and get you by or whatever. Um, it's just still hard to, 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 to get videos done and to sit down and edit videos because you need to be putting out more product so you, you can get more sales or doing advertising or doing other stuff so that you can get, so that you can get more sales. And um, if you're making a quarter million dollars a year, you know, just, you know, opening up a printer and telling people how good a printer is, printing a couple things and then sending them the printer back and telling them, how, hey, man, this was nice. And da 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 with the woo, man. Hey, man, you ain't going to have time to do. You're not going to have time to do the jobs. And so a lot of times people can't tell you how to get customers and how to do things. But this is going to be this is real short. This is real easy. How to get customers. And that's where he's at now. He's trying to, okay, I'm finna start over and I'm finna build a you finna build it from the ground up. And it's different, man. You know, 2018, 2019, you didn't have the stuff that you have today. And, you know, through his videos, he has made a lot of competition. He has made a lot of people, you know, get into this business. Um, and that's one of his that's one of his niches. That's that's one of the great things about him. But um with that, there's a lot more competition, man. People are doing this stuff at home. They're doing it for their families and so forth. Um, so if you just started, you just started, you don't have no product, man. You don't jump right into embroidery or you don't jumped into DTF. You don't bought you one of them DTF machines and you're trying to produce a service for someone. Um, the best, most efficient way for me, if I had to tell you, is to undercut this competition find out what they pricing and, and price under it and it's, it's gonna cost you it's gonna cause you to do more work to late to make less money more work less money and it's gonna take you a longer time to do it but you'll get the you'll get the client and you'll get the eyes on you all right you need people to hit especially if you're going on like a shopify or 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 um sd you have to undercut these folks if somebody on sd selling transfers you got to be selling them cheaper all right you got to be one of the cheapest on there if you just starting out because you're not even in it to make money at that point you're in it to get the to get the traffic you're trying to get the traffic all right it's it's, a, it's almost advertising you're doing a lot of work. it's a brother even right now I haven't put this item up yet, but um, it's an item that I seen somebody else making. I started making it, 
uh, at a cheaper price. It take me a long. I, I understand why this is to price it at this particular point. It need to be priced at that point or it need to be priced more. But, um, you know, this sister has seven machines, six, seven machines, while I only have three. Yeah, tons of people selling cheap transfers. Yep, the cheap is going to get it. Man, I don't care how many times these people say, oh, man, you know, man, we got the best transfers in the world. And we got the most durable transfers. No, you don't. Show us. Show us what powder you using to make yours different. Show us the production. Show us you producing the powder. Show us you producing and manufacturing the ink. If you're not doing that, then you can't brag about you have the best, uh, the most durability and the most durable and all of that. When all of everybody getting their powder from Alibaba. Everybody getting their inks in the printer. Your, your printer come from Alibaba. We know you ain't making no darn transfers. And so it comes down to who's doing the most advertising and who's the cheapest. And the cheapest is a part of advertising. You know what I'm saying? You have people that's going to advertise a lot and, and still have a high price point. But they'll still win because they're getting the eyes on them. It's just like um, just like Rakuma. You know, they get the eyes on them. They spend a lot of money on advertising. They spend a plethora of money on advertising. And that's why their machines are so high. A lot of you don't even know about no buy machine. I ain't know about it till somebody told me. To a brother, you know, one of my uh, brothers told me. You know, he told me, "Hey man, you maybe you should look into this thing here." And I looked into it. I said, like, oh, "Oh, let me take a let me take a risk. Let me take a gamble." And it played out for me. And then I, you know, I I I, I give the information as it was given to me. But Recom has to have those machines that high because of all the advertising that it does. All right. Um, and so if you're not willing to spend the money on advertising your product and advertising your services, <clears throat> if you don't have the budget for that, then you have to spend the money in your labor. <laughs> Meaning you're going to have to work and do things cheaper than the rest of every, than everybody else does. It. You first getting a DTF machine, just say you bought a DTF machine now and you got to be the cheapest. You have to be the cheapest. And then once you get the clientele up, once you get the product up, and then you get another machine, you know. And that's what you, you buy another DT. You get you get two more DTF machines because now you got the clientele. Um, and then it'll start making sense. But a lot of us want to just make this money out of the gate. And you it don't it don't it don't work like that. It can for you, but usually it don't work like that. You know, if you're coming from ground level and you haven't built anything else, just like I had a niche. I was making money, not enough to live on, but I was making money with just my vinyl cutter and vinyl and doing shirts. You know what I'm saying? And then I introduced those clients to, um, to embroidery. But if you ain't got no embroidery, if you, I mean, if you just starting from scratch, Go look at what's selling. Go look at what's selling in the market and undercut them. And like I say, it's going to cost you your labor. It's going to cost you more stress, but you'll get the eyes on you. And then eventually, eventually the time will come where you start making money. All right. But you got to initially put in that 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 work uh, out of the gate so that. So that you can get the eyes on you. It's about getting the eyes on you. Why are they coming to you? All right. You know, uh, he was saying also that Stan was saying also that he didn't even have no store frontage. He didn't even have a sign out front of the store. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't even want no clients. You know, he didn't really even want no clients. You can do us. And that's one. You know what made me buy? What made me buy a vinyl machine? I was I also had a um I also had a church, and I had to pay for the signage for the for the church. I was getting somebody to put the uh to change the signage up for the church, and that joker charged. And he he did it out of a truck. He had a not a truck but a van. He had a cargo van. And he had his whole setup in the cargo van. All he did was signs. He did them for banks. He did them for, he did, he did all this. He did a whole bunch of signs around the city. And he did it out of his truck. You know, he did it out of his cargo van. And I, and I was in the van while he's doing this. I'm like, man, this joker done paid me, done charged me 250 
And all he did was pull out a vinyl cutter and cut the vinyl and peel the vinyl off and put it, you know, those above the stores, they had them little signs. Uh, you could slide those signs out. He slid the sign out. And just put the vinyl on top of there, peeled it off. Man, he went there an hour, charged me $250. Charged me $250. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Because that machine don't even cost. <laughs> the vinyl cutter don't even cost $250, man. So I ended up getting one of them. Um, I ended up getting one of those, 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 those little cheap Amazon packages. And I started from there. You know what I'm saying? But even the signage, man, that's another hustle with the vinyl cutter. You know, you could do store windows. You can do, man, you know, folks is wrapping cars now. You can wrap cars. You can you can do little things to put in the window. My child graduated. All kinds of stuff. Um, RIPs and, and folks' windows. It's a whole bunch of stuff um, you can do with that vinyl cutter. But uh, I initially started with that and started making money with that. But like I said, y'all, you got to go see what's selling. Go on those markets. And I heard that sister say this too, man. The... Um, I forget this sister name, man. She done blew. She got a million. She said she got a million dollar business. Um, but she does the embroidery on the tutus and, and promotes the mail crows uh, machines. But um, she was saying that, you know, she was saying the same thing, man. Go on SD and do the job. See, see, everybody's buying them little tutus in the baby. Now. Undercut them. You got a bark patch. I'm going to show you how it works. Say you got to say, say, say I'm selling. Um. Uh, a Bart Simpson patch. All right. A Bart, a Simpson patch from the Simpsons. And I'm selling this patch for $9. Okay. And this happens. I sell a lot of patches. I sell a lot of patches for $8. I sell, I undercut people now because I got a second shop that I'm doing. I undercut people, but I still make money. I'm just undercutting them because, you know, even, even at where I'm making, I'm making money, even at where my price point is now because a lot of people on SD don't have multiple machines they don't have they probably don't have the experience i have but anyway but some people do you know what i'm saying but some people try to keep things try to you know i don't have to eat that much because i'm i'm in a lower i'm in a lower um economic you know i'm in a place where it's cheap to live all right let me just say that it's very cheap to live where i live <clears throat> you know in um the cost of living that's the word I'm looking for. The cost of living is very low. And, you know, I can I can really eat off an $8 or an $8 patch or a $7 patch or a $5 patch. You know, I go just brew up 20 of them real quick. And, you know, I can ship them things out. for. And I got to teach y'all that too, man. Initially, and I'm going to show you how much money. I done sent out about 50 patches and now shipping on them things have been three, three plus dollars. But I end up having to learn how to ship as a letter. And instead of shipping as a package, and I see a lot of other people listing their items and they have, they're charging $4 for shipping. But now I'm shipping in the shipping, I'm shipping as someone that would stamp a letter. I'm shipping as a letter that'll be stamped. So it's only costing me like 84 cents. So I'm also, I'm also uh, the only one that's saying free shipping. You see what I'm saying? And so a lot of people are coming uh, to that for those patches but that's my second shop that i've been trying to build up i was building it for dtf transfers and trying to sell them but i'm out of that game anyway bart simpson patch i'm selling it for i'm selling it for eight dollars you just got your recoma machine or you just got your buy machine you just got that thing in and you trying to say oh oh look at this patch man phoenix phoenix done sold a little so he done sold man he done sold two thousand of them doing bart simpson patch at eight dollars that's sixteen thousand dollars that joke and I made on them Bart Simpson patches, and uh, you know if you think about that, man, if somebody order came in and ordered sixteen thousand, I mean, uh, uh, ordered two thousand uh, patches, man, people would probably do that patch at about two fifty three dollars. But when you're on those sites like that, you know, you have individuals. Somebody may order a hundred, somebody may order four, but then that end up still just you know instead of reaching out to me and saying, hey, can you do it at a, a price if I get this many, they'll just pay the eight fifty. See what I'm saying? But you see me at 850. And so you come in, you just got your machine, you do a couple runs, say, man, I can do that same patch. I just did that same patch. And so now, if you really want to sell them, you're gonna have to go down to about, you know, you gotta go down to say you go down to seven dollars. And you're gonna do them for seven dollars. And then people are gonna start hitting you 
because the seven better than the eight fifty. Now, let's say the patch. Let's say the patch. You can do four an hour, right? Let's say you can do four an hour, but I can do twelve an hour. So it's you know it's gonna take you longer. It's gonna take you. It's gonna take you three times longer than it takes me to make the patch. But at least you got the machine running. See, not only not only do you got the machine running, you ain't making as much money, but you're also learning the machine. The machine is it's so many benefits outside of just making money in the beginning. There's so many different benefits outside of just making money. You need to learn the machine. You need to get comfortable with the machine. And you're also making a little money for your time. And while you're making a little money, you get more into it. Or you say, oh, man, well, you know, I done made a couple sales. Then you start getting hungry. Then you start getting that blood in your mouth. You're like, oh, oh. Oh, let me go. Let me go look at this other site. Let me see what else Feeney is selling. I'm finna, I'm finna undercut them here. It's a it, listen, man. It's a dog eat dog world. That's why you was talking about the hustle, the hustle, the hustle, the hustle. Man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta outwork these folks. That's what it's coming down to. Is that you have to outwork these folks on the social media uh, spectrum, on the just somebody pulling up and trying to get some work done from you. Man, you gotta be on Google. You gotta advertise on Google. Um, you got to advertise your work amongst um, amongst your city, really. And now I'm sitting here thinking about it like you may need to even go to social media and friend everybody in your area. You know, send out friends, send out flyers in there. And this is what I'm lacking. This is just this a revelation just hit me. Like, yeah, I need to send out flyers, email flyers. I need to start messaging these folks and let them know that their work being done and where it's being done at. Um and you need to, you know, you need to have you some signage. Even if you're working out of your house, put some signage out there in the front yard. Put a little, some signage out there saying, hey, man, this is a so-and-so prints or so-and-so embroidery shop. And you can come in here. Like, people got to know in your area what you're doing. Go to the ball games, pass out cards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, when people call you, undercut. You got to undercut everybody around you. Undercut them, get them in good, and then you raise your prices up. And then you... Then you meet everybody else where they at. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's pretty much what it comes down to, y'all. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get eyes on you, it's two ways to do it. Either you're going to pay for advertisement or you're going to pay with labor, with doing things cheaper. It's taking you longer and um, it's taking you longer and you shipping it faster and you getting it out faster and you just doing good business asking for reviews um and so you can't be you know like this 20 minutes that i've sat on here i could have been doing you know i could have been could have been messaging people you know what i'm saying letting them know hey man this is this is the print shop this is the this is the new embroidery shop in the town found out your city your city probably because i know my small city but you know your city has a a social site or a business site where you know you can promote your business and promote things that's going on in the city you could promote your sales and say hey man we got this this special going on on you know you know especially when your city has certain events and stuff going on you can you can also have shirts and stuff made and merchandise made for you know people that's coming in concerts and so forth man it's just it's a it's a lot of ways to do this thing even if you got a big concert that's coming in you got a big concert that's coming into your city, man. You can have some some shirts made with that artist on there, man, and, and go out there and have your cards. You don't have to make a lot of money on it, you know what I'm saying? But if you just get some transfers, you get a design made, some transfers. Yeah, say it's a rock band, you can catch them outside, and you may get kicked off. You may get kicked out. Like when I first got here, for some of the schools, I um. I went to the schools and I was selling the the the, the scullies, uh, the beanie hats, and you know I would sell about six seven, you know probably within an hour hour and a half, and uh, I was selling for ten dollars a piece, and you know eventually you know a couple of them I was connected with, but eventually some of the schools kicked me out. <clears throat> but before they was kicking me out, I was letting them know that you know I ran an embroidery and print shop and that. You know, y'all could be doing these for fundraisers. You know, I was just charging ten dollars. You just seen how many I sold. Um, I don't really want to be out here. I was just trying to get plugged in, trying to see 
um, trying to show y'all some 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 opportunities for fundraisers and so forth to help the help the help the school and help the help the athletic teams so that they can have some more funding. Even now, I have um, I got a cousin that coach a basketball team, and he's looking for money for a fundraiser so they can buy new uniforms. You know what I'm saying? So it just be stuff like that, and then you get plugged in. They need the money to do that. And you can say, hey, well, you know, I can do these uniforms for a little cheaper than who, you know, how much y'all paying for y'all uniforms? You know, I can do these things a little cheaper. And even if you have to outsource and find your manufacturer overseas or in Pakistan, like I know a manufacturer that does, uh, that does football uniforms and soccer uniforms, make them from scratch. <clears throat> and I would call them, you know, they probably don't need no more than, you know, a basketball team probably ain't going to need no more than 20. You know what I'm saying? So you get them things done and blah, 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 blah. But um, you could order from sites like eBay and all these other spots, and then you just do the print and the embroidery on it. So it's just, it's just, you know, it's it's a lot of ways to do it, but, man, it's just no getting around. You're not going to make, you know, you your value in the beginning comes with you working that machine and gaining the experience. And you put in the efforts to um, to get eyes on you. And you get eyes on you by two ways. Advertising and undercutting. Advertising, undercutting. <laughs> Advertising, undercutting. You know, you gotta be you gotta be vicious out here. And that's the thing. You got you got you got uh who was that man said that man um uh, Wallow. For a million dollars worth of game. That's why I get the whole million dollars worth of thread. But he said in New York, man, it'd be it be ten food trucks, man, all selling tacos. He said it'd be it'd be a food truck. No, it'd be it'd be ten hot dog stands on the same corner. It's ten hot dog stands on the same corner. You know, and um they in there competing with each other, and that's how that's how this market works. You gotta be out there competing. You see something selling, don't say nah, I'm not gonna do it. It's selling. So now you got 10 hot dog stands. You're like, nah, it's just too many hot dogs. They ain't go, I'm going to try to get some hamburgers. But you know people hitting that block for hot dogs. And you want to go out there, well, I'm going to be the only one out there selling hamburgers. Man, you can do it, but you better have them hot dogs too because people are going to go. They may go to their favorite stand, but if the line is too long, they'll eventually... They will if the line is too long or they too expensive, they will eventually go to um to your hot dog stand because it's a block full of this is where the hot dogs are. So if things are too long for embroidery shops, I had a sister um uh message me today, later today, it's supposed to get back with me about uh some Greek jackets saying that you know she wanna get the patch, she wanna get them. She want to try to get them done cheaply because somebody, they done tried to get it done a certain way and they got a certain budget and the charter got this and that and that. So they trying to get them done uh, a little cheaper than, uh, than, you know, than usual, than getting them stuff embroidered on. So you're trying to find another way. And so that's how they, that's how they contacted me. You know what I'm saying? They contacted me through that. So it's all about just putting yourself out there. And your prices do that. Now, if you're talking about branding and you're talking about selling your brand and so forth, that's different. But if you're talking about getting customers in that want your services and want your want you to print out their shirts and want you to do that and da 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 da, um, a lot of times people are gonna call around for the best price. You are not gonna be the only people they call. Imagine yourself. Think about yourself. They don't just you know unless you in the the the, the nice area. Now, if you put your shop in a nice area where, where the money at on the north side, then you may have people that's going to call the closest people to them. But if you mid or on the south side, then you probably you probably one of the few last people that that, that they going to they going to call around, especially if you're in a low area, low budget area. They're going to try to call around. They're going to call everybody on there and see who got the cheapest prices. And then they're going to go with them. They're not worried about quality and all that stuff. They're trying to see who got the cheapest prices for these darn machines. And um, that's how that thing play. That's how that thing gonna play out. And so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know how to. Uh, 
you got to know where you at, what's your customer, what's the market of your customers, what do they want? What do customers want? Not what you want to sell them. That's what that's another thing. See, I came in thinking that too that oh man, I'm going to make this and I make I, that it was all about what I wanted to sell customers, you know. And I cuz I love red and black. I love if it was me, I'll make everything. I'll make my whole brand red and black. But I've had customers tell me, you know, we like them color. You know, you know, we like colors. We want things to be a little more colorful. And it's still hard for me to make that. It's still hard for me to do it. And so a lot of times now, you know, I just, you know, I try to put out products that they can they can customize themselves. Either that or I look at what's selling. It was this. Y'all remember I was doing them sweaters with the Texans. Uh, I did the sweaters with the Texans. I might have, I might have, them things, the sweaters may have came off. But I was doing this, well, it's just too hot now. I was doing them sweatshirts and I was letting them customize, put whatever they wanted to put on the front in this particular font. So I didn't have to digitize it. I undercut everybody. <laughs> I undercutted everybody on Esty. And I end up getting a couple of jobs. I end up getting like a like a twenty five piece or forty piece, and then you know like the little singles here and there. Um, but they were hitting mines, and we all had like the same profile pictures. Wasn't nobody taking no different pictures. I would take the pictures too, but I'm just being honest, y'all. Can I be honest? I would take that. I would go to the site. I would go to they 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 design. I would take their pictures. And I would put them on mine, and I would undercut them. That's just, it's a vicious market, man. Do you want the money? Do you do you want the machine working? Is the machines just sitting there? You want the machines working? You want to learn how to do it? You know, it's it's one thing to watch the videos, but you gotta you gotta get hands on. You gotta be hands on, and to keep them and to keep them machines working, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta be you you know you gonna have to undercut these folks. You're going to have to be the cheapest on the block coming out because don't nobody know you. Don't nobody know you. And once they know you, once you get the word around, then you can get up the prices. Or you you combat the low price by adding more equipment, especially with embroidery. Because if somebody orders, we were talking about those Bart Simpson, somebody orders 50 of those Bart Simpson patches. And, and I can only, you got one machine, you can make four of them an hour. Even at four an hour, you were selling them at seven dollars, twenty eight dollars an hour. Now you increase that with another machine. You can still keep it at seven dollars an hour, but now you know after a year or so, or two years, or three years, however it take, now you can make, now you can make um, eight. You can make eight an hour, and then that's fifty six dollars an hour that you're making off of that patch. You see what I'm saying? So you ain't even have to move the price. You 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 move the price up and you increase your value by produce uh increasing your production. Increasing your production rate. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that thing works, man. You don't try to sell at what these other folks selling at. You want to be recognized on SD, on Spotify, and then you have your other stuff in there too. Your your individual stuff that you know people can look at it may catch their eye and then they buy that and then you got that if you may have a t-shirt on there for 25 dollars that only costs you about seven dollars to make eight dollars to make um but initially you getting them there with items that are, are high selling items you have to find out on on these sites what is selling what is selling what are people selling the most and then you make something like it or you make the exact same product and sell it cheaper I don't care what you're doing, and I don't care what you. If, even if you're doing laser engraving, you're doing 3D printing, you doing, you know, whatever you're doing. All right, you doing, you selling transfers, you got, you selling, you selling, you making bead necklaces. All right, you got to find out how to undercut them. You got to find out how to get things cheaper, and then you have to just outwork people. You got to outwork people on these sites. A lot of people are just buying stuff to sell to other people. You know what I'm saying? Somebody could be buying them 50 Bart Simpson patches and then selling them, selling them at their school or selling them to somebody else. So that's how y'all do it, man. It ain't no shortcuts in this thing. Or you advertise or you pay for the advertising. 
and you gamble with that. I don't trust the advertising like that. If somebody got a great story about the advertising, hey, man, put it in there and tell me how much I really need to spend. And then, you know, I may, you know, if I got it, you know, I'll shoot it out there. But other than that, for me, I know it's safer to just outwork them. That's the, I know that'll get you. You you got an SD shop up and you haven't made a sale in three, four months. You haven't made one sale, your, your prices. You, made, you, you got items that people don't want or your price is too high. And you're not getting, um, and I'm going to tell you too, man, buy some of your own stuff. Start out, get some of your friends to buy some of your stuff, man, and give you a five-star review. You know what I'm saying? Just get you a couple of reviews. Get you about five to six of reviews under your belt. Some low price items. Say, yeah, they sent my stuff and da 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 woo So people won't be uh, skeptical uh, also that, you know what I'm saying, you're really doing what you're saying you're doing. But uh, that's all I wanted to talk about, y'all, is just. Trying to help y'all with that customer base thing, man. It, I know that sounds cruel, and and but business, that's what business is, man. You know what I'm saying? The SD fees are terrible, man. I'm, I'm going to be 100. And you know what? Because I have some high-priced items, I have items on SD that are like $300. You know what I'm saying? And I, it just, I could be, you know, I could be. Just being, you know, uh, what's the word, superstitious, or I could just be uh, thinking conspiracy theorists or something. But every time I sell, let me tell you something. Every time I sell one of those darn items, um, they hit me with this fee. That's almost it's like it almost takes thirty percent. It almost takes thirty percent of those three hundred dollars. Um, because they'll say it came from off-site marketing, that that customer came from off-site marketing. And, um, and how do I know that? You know, how do I know that? Sometimes the customers be, I just be like, you know, I, I actually spoke with the customer before he came and said, yeah, man, just go to my SC site. And then he goes to the SC site and then they, then they buy something and then they hit me with off-site marketing. Outside of that, it's cool. But uh, man, that's part of it. They got the they got the platform. You know, you can listen. You know, man, I, I'm gonna tell y'all this. I pay about fifty dollars a month for my website, and I ain't got nothing on there listed, man. <laughs> I don't even have nothing on there listed, man. And I don't I don't waste it. I waste five hundred dollars a year. I haven't made one sale. On that darn website, have not made not one sale. I've had it for two years. I've wasted a thousand dollars, and haven't driven. I have it up there for for Google, so people can you know people see me on Google, they can hit the website and see that I'm legit and I'm a, you know, I do it for that. But I haven't sold anything. I haven't even listed anything on there, and that's that's me being lackadaisical, man. I need to stop doing that and start driving. But that's what you want. You want to have a website. You get the people from SD and then you put your card in there. Put your card when you ship it out, put your card in there, and then you can direct them straight to your site. And then they can buy from your site next time instead of buying from SD. And you can do it like that. eBay and SD will let you shoot. Like I done shot an invoice in. Sometimes I shoot an invoice in on SD. You know, because some people ask me for stuff outside. Like I was talking earlier about the sister that wanted. Um, asked me could I do something else. I probably didn't say it, but she asked me could I do something else um, for them that came from another site. And, and asked me how much would I charge her to do that, even though that wasn't one of my listings. And I gave her a price. She's going to talk to her people and, and hit me back tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to send her an invoice. I'm not going to make that transaction because it's over, probably over $1,000 transaction. I'm not going to make that transaction in SD. And then you try to hit me with some darn 30, some offsite marketing. Um, you got that from an offsite market. Because through SD, you could pay like $10 a month or something. You know, I, I, you know, yeah, but SD does have that. But at the same time, you got to take that. It costs. Everything costs. And they do try to sell your product. All right. It is a platform that people trust. Um, eBay the same way. I got items on eBay too. I make sales on eBay. Um, eBay will not let you. eBay will flag you if you talk. If you try to contact them people, or you try to put your number in there and say, "Hey, you know, you know." Sometimes I put like uh, Google Google at Finny Prince. You know, I try to try to hint 
But if you give them your number or you try to make that transaction off of eBay, they will flag. They are listening to your messages um, to keep you from, you know, making that transaction somewhere else. But it's all part of the game. It's part of advertising. Uh, they bring traffic and you do make sales. So I'm not mad. I am mad at it, frustrated at it. But um, even that sister, that's why I stay there because even that sister that's making a million dollars a year. She had a million dollar embroidery business. She's still on Etsy. She's still on Shopify. Uh, it just, you know, it's just, it's just where people look, man. People type in stuff. Go type in, go type in uh, Michael Jordan t-shirt. Etsy gonna pop up. Etsy <laughs> listings will pop up. Say a shirt. I need a shirt with Michael Jordan dunking a basketball on. Man, SD will pop up. Uh, SD listing will pop up in that search engine. And so uh, that's just some of the stuff you got to take, man. That's some of the hits you got to take from uh, selling on that platform. So I ain't mad at it. It's still a good place to go and uh, get customers. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you got to pay the fee. Anybody else got any questions before I, before I log off? Anybody else got any questions before I log off? But yeah, they. Uh, I know y'all a few seconds behind me, but uh, yeah, I, you know that's just part of it, man. I had that happen to one of them, them sweatshirts I was talking about, man. They hit me with a crazy fee, man. They hit, they hit me for seventy dollars, and I was like, man. But that's how they make their money, man. I'm gonna tell y'all a trip too, man. I, I was driving, and I went to pick up this equipment. I gotta show y'all this equipment I got to. Um. I was picking up some equipment in Atlanta, and, man, I seen Shopify and Amazon. They have facilities in Noonan. I seen them. They right next to each other. They are right next to each other. Spotify and Amazon are in the same parking lot. They're in the same facility. They may, they may be on, but I don't know. I may be late, and they, you know, uh, Amazon bought them out. Um... Let's see if I can see the comment again. You know, y'all, this is my first time actually live. But uh, I just seen somebody say thanks. And I appreciate you for subbing. Uh, they seen a, seen a recoma. I'm finna do a, I'm finna do a, uh, probably before Monday, maybe Sunday. I'll do a, I'll do a two and a half, uh, two and a half or two year, three year review on the, on my recoma machine. Um. The buy, man, do you know that buy per, man? I love, <laughs> you know, for me, like, I'm going to tell y'all something. I, I I did a video, but I didn't, I haven't uploaded it yet. But I'm going to tell y'all since y'all here, a few that we got here, man. Um, I'm going to tell you something that, that the buy, to me, the buy stitch is better. Uh, it's a better machine t to me. That's what, it, for me, it is, feel like it's a better machine. But the Racoma, though, it does have a wider platform. Now, if you buy... If you buy the buy, uh, the mirror 1501, if you buy the 1501, it has the same um, stitch stitch width as the Racoma does. But that buy, my, the 1502 buy does not have that same width. The, the biggest hoop for that is 15 by 15. And I was doing some hats, man. I was going to run some hats on the buy machine, but they were, they were three-sided hats. And I went to go to the side of the hat to do it, the side of the hat on the buy machine, and I couldn't do it. It wasn't enough. It wasn't en the parameters weren't wide enough for me to do the front and then do the side of the hat. Like this hat right here, I would have to rehoop the hat. I would have to take the hat off and rehoop it on the buy, on that fifteen oh two. If you get the fifteen oh one, you can do both of them. All right. Um, and so if you got, if you got the 1501, I think the 1501 is about like $4,000 and it has the same parameters. And then you got the Recoma that's 16,000. I still owe $6,500. I still owe what I paid for that two, two head buy after, after close to three years, um, on my Recoma. And so, but yeah, man, it's just, I'm finna get ready to run. I'm finna get ready to run a ton of patches on it, on this, on this buy, man. I'm gonna run it on the Recoma also. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it stitches better. I think it's just a, a bit, I think it's a better quality machine to me. But the Recoma, the Recoma, like I said, with that, that wide, that, 
you know, no, I don't think nobody touching them with that darn that big hoop. Let me get that hoop. This hoop right here, I can't even put it in the screen all the way. But this hoop, ain't nobody best with Rakoma with this hoop right there. <laughs> that hoop right there, ain't nobody messing with Rakoma with that big old hoop right there. You know, but outside of that, if you're not a, like me, I do a lot of full, full backs. I do a lot of full backs. I like to fill up the, I do a lot of high price, I do some high price garments. And I like to fill up the back. <clears throat> I like to make garments from scratch. So I like to embroider. I like to, you know, now I'm doing using the tables and stuff like that. And um, and so I love yeah, what's up, what's up, uh Norcal? I love the um uh, I love big hoops. Would I pay would I pay what I pay for that machine for that big hoop? No. No. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it. But um I do appreciate it. And it is a good machine. I don't really have nothing negative to say about it. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just pricey and it's because they have to do all that advertising. Because they have to get the eyes on them. That's what I was saying earlier. Is when if you're gonna advertise, if you wanna sell at a certain price point, it's two ways to sell, it's two ways to get customers. If you wanna sell at a certain price point, you're gonna have to do a lot of advertising. But if you're going to, I went with Wakoma because of my inexperience and they had good support. But my new machine would definitely be a buy. Yeah, all praises, man. They got, they got, a, and they got a lot of videos and stuff, and you know that you can learn from. But I don't really get into them videos like that. But they do be live on Alibaba, so you can just like uh, the CEO, they getting their whole script from them. just like the CEO. Uh, I forget his name. He goes live every now and then. Buy, they go live at the. Uh, Baradin would go twenty two eighteen. You said you saying the new Baradins or they do, they do twenty two eighteen now, and I and I'm saying in a hoop now the the flat. If I talk about the um, they 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 uh, they they sash frame, the sash frame is a lot bigger than that hoop that I just showed. The sash frame is around twenty four something. Um. So they fast frame is even bigger because the sash frame on the buy, like I say, their biggest hoop is 15 by 15, and the sash frame is like 22 by something. But Rakoma's Rakoma is bigger, and then they got that TC that's really that's really ridiculous. Um, but you know, my next machine may be a my next machine. May, you know, I might get one of them China machines that um uh, they got them wide parameters that's just for uh. That's just for, um, you know, doing like flats that has wide parameters, you know, 30 by, you know, just ridiculous. I had to show y'all some of those. I'll be watching a lot of that stuff that, that overseas. I can't understand what they're saying, but I just like to look at the machines and compare them. They all the same, man. You should see the same shells. You see them same shells. They from China. They from China, y'all. I just, you know, if they from China... They from China, man. China using them same parts. They're using the same. Even in DTF. If, if it's from China, it's from China. 18 inches is definitely, yeah, the 18 inches is definitely huge. You know, it's definitely huge. But you'll be surprised, man. You'll be surprised. Because even, even this hoop, it kind of it kind of has a bend to it. So your, your, your biggest point, let me see if I can get out some. It's in the in that center area there, you know, in that center here. But sometimes if you got an M, because it's not really a, just a square, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that image in the middle, you know, a lot of times that's where I had to, that's why I had to, and I end up filling this thing up. I said, I, I, I fill that thing up, man. Um, you know, with a lion head or something like that, man. 120,000 stitches, 150,000 50, stitches. I be doing a lot of that stuff, man. Especially this 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 past month, man. I show y'all some of those garments, but uh, yeah, I want to get into to, into a lot of this Pakistan, 
and garment type stuff, man. You know, stuff that uh, a lot of people just buy from China and it be all cheaply made. But if you can get one that's custom and uh, with good fabric, you know, a lot of these African dashiki kind of kind of garments that's that's some good fabric and good heavy heavy fabric and good stitching where it don't just fall apart and i done bought some of those things man for 30 40 dollars and you know i done seen them like just totally disintegrate definitely come apart you need smaller hoops for smaller sizes of the same designs yeah 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 that's what i'm saying it's not you know it just depends on what you're doing you know what i'm saying for business you know you for business this ain't gonna matter man you know it's not really um Unless you're doing a whole bunch of um, motorcycle jackets and you may be doing Greek jackets and you want to, you know what I'm saying? But even if you had a 15 by 15 and even if you were doing those Greek jackets, you're still going to have to piece it. You know, you'll do one, you'll do that upper name in one, then you'll do that middle section and then you'll hit that bottom. You're not going to try to do all of them at the same time and uh, risk messing something up. But a 15 by 15... Or even smaller than that can get you, still can get you a good full back and, and, and so forth. Or you can use, worst case, you can use a sash frame, which is over 20 inches. Most sash frames are over 20 inches uh, if you're doing, you know, garments like that. But, yeah, you really just need them 5x5, five 725s. Five, five. I forget those other ones, man. That's, you know, kind of, I got to get that one. It's kind of, it's kind of thick about like, about like that um, for the Mighty Hoops. Cause that's what you're gonna be doing, man. You're gonna be doing left chest logos, you know, and embroidery. So you could even have that little one of those little brothers. You know, it's just speed. It's just you doing the commercial machines because you're getting speed. And um, yeah, for the most part, you're getting speed, man. All of them doing the same thing. You just you just getting speed for the most part. And just, you know, just being able to just doing multiple threads and so forth. But even one of those desktops, I got one of them desktop brothers, uh, you know, where you got to change it. Uh, let me see. That's an embroidery machine. I never even embroidered on it. It'll do it, but it may take you an hour to do a left chest. <laughs> it may take an hour to do a left chest on that thing. <laughs> so I just don't do it. And that's the thing. I could do it for content, and be, but I ain't got time to do that, man. I ain't got time to just be making no darn content sitting up there and, and mess with that darn machine. <laughs> and it's taking an hour to sit up there and make a patch, man. I ain't finna sit there and do that. I ain't finna do that, man. Uh, but all these machines, if it embroider, embroider, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not like, it's not like the, like the industrial sewing machines. You know, that machine I just had up there, it's not like that. Use that for collars. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ain't even took the time to even learn that thing, though. I use that for sewing. <laughs> and then what's crazy is... I had to buy another one. Had to buy another machine last week because I um the bobbin case in that machine. I had to order another bobbin case, and uh, it ended up chipping away. The same thing with the embroidery machines. At the top of that embroidery machine or the bobbin case, man. You know it. You get just you have to replace those plates every now and then. <laughs> so after about two, three years on that machine, well, nah, I haven't had that machine in maybe three, four years. Um, that bobbin case messed up, man. I was, it was, <clears throat> I was having all kind of issues with 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 thread and needle breaks, and and then that's part of the equipment that I have to show y'all. I did end up was given some, uh, I was given a straight stitch machine. Somebody who had a, a elder woman had a curtain business. And, you know, she end up, the, the equipment end up getting them to my hands um, for free. And it's an industrial straight stitch machine. It's an industrial blind stitch machine. 
And I want to say a surger. A surger also. But, man, it's about about four or five thousand dollars worth of uh, equipment man if you see them things now all i would really need is now um the machine to sew the patches on you know to sew on leather patches but that's once i start doing that and that's why i was telling y'all man it's gonna be going out here buying this equipment man you know if you really start selling these things then and they start taking off a little bit then you know buy your machine and start selling it but it, but if you got it you got it you know what i'm saying but if you you ain't got it, man. Don't just jump out here and buy equipment because you got an idea. You know what I'm saying? Because, oh, yeah, I'm finna do this and I'm finna do that. And you finna go buy all this equipment. And sometimes this stuff will fall into your hands like that. You know, I was very close to buying a machine. I price, I price by amount of items, time it takes to do per hour or per day. And, and NorCal, he, he, very, um, he very familiar with the game, man. But we was talking about, you know, how do you start off and you getting those customers? NorCal, how do you get those customers out the gate? Because you do. And I remember you telling me about, you know, people saying you got some low prices. <laughs> you got some low prices. But it's about, and that's what this thing is about, man. You want people to see you. And you first start now, you want people to see you, man. You got to compete with these prices, man. They're going to the, a lot of people are going to the lowest it's just like bidding for jobs, man. It's just like when you start bidding for, for school jobs, you start bidding for government contracts. A lot of those contracts, they go to the lowest bidder, man. Or the highest, you know, you know, whoever going to do it the lowest. Word of mouth and Google. You, did you advertise? Did you spend money on advertising? And that's the thing too, man. Word of mouth. Do a good job. When you do a job for a person, they're gonna recommend somebody. Especially if you have like a you know, you have a school hat or you doing man, you could do a hat for your child's school. Just do a half. They're gonna ask her. They're gonna ask her, you know, why you um uh, why you uh where you where she get that hat from. You know, the students even gonna ask, like, where she get that hat? Where they and then that'll open up that thing, and then teachers may may say something. Yeah, you definitely gotta get on get on Google, man. You definitely gotta get on uh definitely gotta get on Google. And that's what I'm saying. They're not gonna call you if you're not there. They don't know how to get in contact with you. So you gotta go in. You gotta spend some money, man. You gotta go in. Google free though. <clears throat> but you need to legitimize your business, man. You need to make a get your business account and um not an account, but get you a business license and get yourself listed on Google, man. That stuff is free. And, you know, you can't be sitting here. Like I was saying, I was talking about Stan had the building, but then he have it. Don't even have the advertising on the building. Don't even have, you know, Stan's printing shop on the building. You know, you got to be able or even have signs in your yard. Put them little, them little signs in your yard if you're working out the house. Yeah, I, I, you know, get to get to put a signage in your yard. Somebody may see it, and they just know. You know, some people be wanting to do something, but they just don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? Some people they be like, ah, you know, they don't know it's it's available right there. They thinking they got to go here, they got to go there. They can just see the sign, and, you know. But and a lot of people, like I say, they gonna go to Google, and whoever closest to them, they gonna they gonna hit it. They gonna hit the button on whoever closest to them. That's who they gonna call first. Whoever closest, and then if they're cheap, they are gonna call whoever's the cheapest. They are gonna call everybody and see who the cheapest. See who if they can get it lower, man. I'm a I'm a I'm a head. I'm gonna tell y'all this other story, man. Well, did I tell y'all this? I be making so many videos and not uploading them, y'all. I don't even know if I told y'all, but it was just one sister, man. I don't remember I told y'all about. I made this. I made that that letter P. For a customer. She just wanted to applicate P. I don't know what I... Ch I just chalked it up to her giving me a review. I told y'all about the, the P. Right? Ox said he do a lot of hats. That's what he's known for. He attacked one thing. And that's what I was telling y'all too, man. You know, you don't have to spread yourself all over the place. You can't... You can't do everything. You can't do everything, man. You find you a niche. This is what you do. Some people just do patches. I got a whole nother darn, uh, I got multi-hat, uh, hoop, hooping stations for hats. 
uh, because this sister, and then the sister was recognized on Rakoma. She was one of the last sisters. Of, she was on Rakoma for doing patches, man. She had she had like five or six uh, of they little ones, man. I forget what they little ones called. The EM 1010s. She had about five or six of them, and she was in the apartment. Man, when she bought her other one, her last couple, she was saying that, you know, who was trying to, you know, who was trying to buy the hat drive. She had bought two more. And she was trying to see who bought the hat driver, need a hat driver and the uh and uh, the hooping stations and all the stuff that's going with hats because she just refuses. She's not making hats. And uh all she's doing is patches. And so they gave her two more, you know, uh, well, she bought, she she bought, I don't know how they did it, but she, you know, she got two more machines. And uh that, that, that totaled her up to about five or six, and then she probably got them though. If if she probably bought them if she was selling the selling the accessories and all that other stuff, you know, from those machines. And um that's all she does, man. You you know, and, and the other sister that, that has the million dollar business, most of the stuff she does is just there. You know, the Apple K um, baby shirts. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, just find you a niche, and then you're not all over the place. See, that's what I'm saying. We get all this equipment. We'll be trying to do DTF, and some of this stuff we just got to sub out. Trying to get a Chanel machine, and trying to, and a lot of stuff just because that's what you want to do. But the customer ain't told you to get that. Customers ain't told you to do all that stuff. That's what This is what they want. This is what they buying. So, you got to focus in on that, and then... You can go out to this other stuff, but at the end of the day, you can't run all those machines. You can't run a supplication, a sublimation machine, a DTF machine, an embroidery machine, a, a, a sewing machine, a, you know, whatever else, 3D printing. You can't do all this stuff at the same. Take it from me. You know what I'm saying? You can't do all this stuff. But like stuff like laser engravers, embroidery machine. I mean, uh, laser engravers, embroidery machines too, and um. And 3D printers, they, it's not a lot of maintenance on them. You know, it's not a lot of maintenance, man. These machines, just, the embroidery machine just need to be, you just need to be oiled, man. Just got to oil them things, man, and, and blow out them threads. It's not a lot of maintenance like these other things, man. Yeah, that gear lust, you right, man. It's a new machine all the time. Then you buy stuff that you really don't need. Then you got to have computers for all this stuff. Then you thinking, it, this is what I was thinking in my brain, man. I'm going to run all of them at the same time. But you got to be in front of them machines, man. You got to be in front of that DTF machine. You got to babysit it. You know what I'm saying? You may let that vinyl run. You can maybe, maybe, but sometimes you'll look, man, you ain't got that vinyl in there straight and it done turned crooked and it done balled up. Y'all done seen it. I know y'all done did that. <laughs> you done done cut vinyl. You, you chilling. You average. You doing something else. And before you know it, you hear the vinyl balling all up and... <laughs> Because you ain't put it in there straight. It, it seems straight at first. It seems straight for about a yard or two. But then, you know, you you doing 50 designs, cutting out, and you don't walk away. And you don't, you don't waste it doing two yards of vinyl. <clears throat> so, yeah, man, that gear lust. Don't fall into that, man. Make, get you something. Start making money. Start making money with that. Find out what the customers want. Try to get you a niche market in that. But back to that story I was talking about with that letter P. She was saying that um, she came back and it was like seven other letters that, that she needs on this shirt. It was like seven letters, applique letters. I charged her. I don't forget what I charged her. But to do all of those letters, I told her I was going to charge her $60, which was still low end. But I knew what she was trying to do. She just trying to make one shirt for it. That's what I was thinking. She's just trying to make one shirt for herself. And so she has these applique in the inside of the letter. It had the letter P in the inside. It had a bandana applique inside. And again, it was like seven or eight other letters. It can make that, yeah. It can make that. You can do that in a, with a single, but you just need, you got to have the, the client. It's able to do that. It's just getting the, getting the people, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just getting the clients, getting the work, but it definitely can do that and maybe even more. But you gotta get the you gotta get the clients, and that's the issue. And that's not the machine's fault. <laughs> it ain't the machine fault that uh you don't have the work. You can't blame the machine for that. The machine is sitting and collecting dust because uh we're not making ourselves, we're not making ourselves known. But yeah, the money. 
the, the machine can pay for itself. They not they not jugging you on that information. I'm in Los Angeles, California. People got money here. I just need to reach those people. Come. Huh? You know, like I said, NorCal in Cali too. I'm thinking in Los Angeles though, but he in Cali. And uh he was telling me there's a couple couple shots out there making it, but you yeah, you gotta make yourself known. You gotta get yourself known out there. Uh and it's it's free ways to do that. Google is definitely a free way. And going to Facebook and getting inside of those uh getting inside of those um well, uh, he just got a, he just got a, he just got his first recalling. So, you know, he, he, he just got into the gate, just got in there. Six heads, you, you, you know, and you got to have to work. Got to have to work first, man. But, um, yeah, get inside of those groups, man. Get inside of those groups. <laughs> inside of your city groups, get inside them Los Angeles groups, man. See what's going on. And uh, try to try to catch you one of those niche markets within there, man. But you can't get customers if you're not listed, you're not known. You can't like if you're not listed on Google, you can't expect nobody to call. Nobody's gonna call you. All right, nobody's gonna call. So you got to do that, man. Definitely do that. Um, but yeah, that that you know. She wanted, but then she texted me back after I did told her it was gonna be fifty, sixty dollars. She texted me back. She said, "Um, well, how many shirts do I gotta get to get it down to ten dollars a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> to get you to do this for ten dollars a shirt, how many, how many shirts do I need?" I said, "Man, even if you order ten thousand from me, I couldn't get it at no ten dollars a shirt. I couldn't do it." <clears throat> and so I said, man, you may need to call, get you a manufacturer overseas. And I gave her a manufacturer. And you know what the manufacturer said? Can you guess what the manufacturer said about doing that shirt for $10? Can you guess what the manufacturer said about doing that shirt for $10? Even even the main even the manufacturers on Alibaba said, "Nah, it's too, it's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too difficult of a design because you have to applicate each one of those letters. And you know, even at you know, even at ten thousand, you know, you start thinking in your head, man, ten thousand times ten, man, that's a hundred thousand. You know, man, that's some good money, man. That's ten thousand, man." You know, a honey cake, man. You know, then that's a good man, but you can't do it. <laughs> it's gonna take you too long. I don't care how many machines you got, because you gotta do each one of them darn letters and applicate each one of those letters, man. It take too it's too much. It's too much, it's too much tinkering going on to do that for ten dollars a shirt. It's gonna take you, it's gonna take you too long. Not unless you had one of those machines that had laser, it had a laser. You got embroidery machines that have a laser on them. And the, it'll embroider the it'll do the lay down stitch for the applique, and then it would do, then it would do uh, it will lay it'll do the it will laser cut it out, and then you can peel the fabric off, and then it will do the satin stitch, you know. But <clears throat> I, they don't sell the machines here. They don't sell the machines here, man. And I I couldn't imagine what kind of plug you need to run. To run that machine like that, but I done seen them, man. Yeah, ten dollars a shirt. She she said, "How many do I need, man?" If like, and even 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 China wouldn't even do it. <laughs> China wouldn't even do that mess, man. That's how I know. And I was like, man, yeah. So and sometimes you got to tell customers, no, man, I can't do that, man. I can't do that. Now you could mess around and could have said yeah and been hungry and man you would have been in a world of and she would have been she would have been done on your neck calling you about that mess. How long it's gonna take? What they looking like? Show them to me. Where they at? How many you got done now? Just send me them. Get up, man, please. And I had did some time. I said, man, that would have took me about three months to do, man. Four months. If everything goes smooth, it probably took me four or five months to do that. Because I would have to do 10, no, you know, I think that was at 1,000. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. At 1,000 to make 10,000. And it would take me three, four months. I couldn't do it. 
it wasn't worth me doing. Uh, and she's trying to sell it at that. But you know what I did recommend her to do? The DTF printing. So I was going to take the design. And this is why you got to know the graphic, the graphics too, the, the, the Photoshop. I was going to take the design, put it in Photoshop, and um, do the fake embroidery stitch. And so it's, it, it, it looks like embroidery, but it's not. It just looks like it's embroidered on there, but it's really print. And I said, I can do that for you for $6 a shirt, you know, for 1000 And guess what I was going to do? I was gonna go buy. I was gonna buy them transfer. I was gonna buy them transfers, and then uh, get somebody to get somebody to do the transfers for me, and then cut them out and press them. That was it. And uh, even at you know six dollars, cause it was it was like a quarter. It was like an eight by eight design. So I had did it, man. I could still make you know, cause she was gonna provide the shirts. And so I could still make at six dollars. I was like, yeah, man, I could still make at least four dollars a shirt. That's still a good. I still a good lick just for pressing some shirts. <clears throat> but um, that's just how that thing works, man. That's just how. That's just that's just the game. And so you had those conversations. You kind of running those numbers in your head, trying to see if you know if it if it makes sense. And sometimes you know in this business you gonna short yourself. You gonna think something is just just gravy to do? You like, oh man, man, man I do that, man, I do it. I probably knock that out, man, couple days, and then you get that design and start playing with it, and you start seeing, you know, how much, you know, how much that darn, how much trouble that thing is, especially with applique. Or you know, you you get into some stitches, man, and you done charge them before you seen that design. Don't don't ever price nothing before you see the design. Tell them jokers nothing until you see that design, man. <clears throat> I did that with the doing the, the Q shirts one time, man. And I was thinking that thing was gonna be about ten thousand stitches. It was end up being like twenty five thousand. I actually made a patch. <clears throat> I made a patch that I'm finna get ready to start selling for them, and it was it was thirty thousand stitches. I'm like, man, I can't sell that for no eight dollars. Not finna sell that. And where the patch? I ain't got it near me. And I got to cut the inside of the patch. And that's the thing, too. I'm still trying to find out how are people, because I've used this plastic. Let me show y'all. I watched a couple of videos and people say, well, buy this, buy this plastic here. You buy this stuff from Home Depot. And you can use this as backing, and the the patch would just pop out. Okay, you don't have to put no back. You just put this down, and you're gonna stitch on top of this or a trash bag. You don't see people do that, and they pop this little stitch out of there. Now, when I've done stitches, this have not worked for me. It don't just it pop out, but it be all flimsy, and it be it, it don't it don't be it don't be quality, man. Don't be quality. And I've seen some other clear stuff that people, there's a couple websites are selling that's supposed to be for patches that you can pop out. Uh, I'm still kind of weary. After this, I'm weary. You know what I'm saying? And then I've seen somebody who does, i seen somebody on YouTube who does, who uses the, he uses a Recoma too. He uses their software for the most part. Um, he probably the only one that I, <laughs> that I know uses their software. He got the, 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 twelve hundred dollar version <clears throat> which i don't i don't i wouldn't recommend it man i would the standard is that will come uh that's what people are going to send you their files as if once people send you files if you got somebody digitizing files for you uh when they send you that file and you put it in chroma it's not a native file and so Things can get a little twisted a little bit. Like things can get, you know, you may it may add some stitches here and there, stuff like that. Uh, so I do recommend that uh, if you get a file, if you gonna buy a software, man, you buy what the what the industry using is is Wilcom. It's some form of Wilcom. Um, it's different levels to that too. But um, 
Yeah, I, I seen him doing it and he cutting his patches out. So I was like, man, that's all he do is cut. All he do is make patches. And even that sister, I seen her cutting hers out. So you got to cut these things out. And this other patch was kind of, I got to cut the inside side and be, you know, get a, one of them little knives and kind of slice it. And I was like, man, that is, I, 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 I dread even putting it up. But I'm going to see. It's just fishing. I'm going to see if it, if it, if it catch anything, man. But uh, I'm going to let y'all have at it, man. Like, again, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do these things, man. And I appreciate everybody for liking and subbing, man. You know, I'm finally able to go live. Um, and and that's a big that's a big benefit because I, I really don't be having time to edit. That's why y'all be seeing me looking any kind of way, dressing, and just throwing these things up because I just don't be having time to uh put in the work you know what i'm saying i can talk and, and i can you know i can get on here and talk real quick and show y'all some stuff but uh to get up there and edit that stuff and do all that man that stuff even putting the door and the title up and and hitting the hitting the putting all the tags in you know what i'm saying i'd be i'd be sometimes i don't even be doing that i just throw it up there and for who catch it they catch it you know what I'm saying? Some of these Jews, if they catch these Jews, they catch it. If not, then yeah. You know what I'm saying? The market already crazy anyway. But uh, yeah, y'all, that's what we take from this. Advertising, listing, making ourselves known, and uh, undercutting. All right? Keep those things, those three things with you. You know what I'm saying? And you can you can start um, starting to get some customers. But uh, I hope this thing was beneficial to y'all, man. Y'all be blessed, man. Thank y'all again. We got a thousand subscribers, y'all. We got we we hit the mark. We hit a thousand, and uh, I see y'all on the next one. No problem.